Hello, my name's Pat. Uh, so James, Lisa, and Neil. And so today we're going to present a plan that we did with, uh, some, as it was mentioned, with uh, Pat Condon, Scott Hines over there, and James Tour, a local architect. And it's really a, a collaboration, a studio, urban design studio that came out of a collaboration between the School of Architecture, Landscape Architecture, and the School of Planning. Uh, why do we do this? A couple of reasons why we embark on this project. It's first, Vancouver doesn't have an OCP, official community plan. There's no real sort of urban framework to help guide us as we move along outside of downtown core. So this project really looks at outside of downtown core. How can we do that? And second is to look at how can we accommodate double the population, about 3.94 million people without large development, but actually through sort of incremental developments, incremental uh, forms of, sort of increasing housing. So we're looking at sort of infills and stuff like that. And, large, uh, and also look at how we can respect the history, the urban form and the demographics of the city. Um, and lastly, also look at how can we actually use sort of uh, the streetcar network. And it's not a new thing, we're simply reviving what already exists or had existed in Vancouver, the streetcar network, and how can we use that network to link up new sort of residential development, incremental residential development throughout the city. So we'll go on to the next slide, and Lisa's going to talk a bit about the methodology that we used. Okay. So um, we determined that there were four different types of methodologies that we needed to really examine in order to have a really good idea of what we wanted the city to look like in 2050. Uh, the first one was the, the transport, and we really re-examined the issue of Vancouver used to be a streetcar city, why isn't it a streetcar city anymore? And, um, and just how that, that came about. And, and while biking and walking are really the ideal forms of transport that we want to um, make available to everyone, the streetcar is, is definitely a really good um, alternative for public transit. The second thing we looked at were energy systems in the city and where district energy might be applied um, in order to be more sustainable, to decrease the CO2 emissions and um, and provide provideable neighborhoods with, with uh, sustainable energy. And thirdly, we looked at housing and what housing might look like in 2050. So we we're exploring new typologies because we are expecting a mostly elderly population and that will actually be us by that time. So we're looking at what we want to live in in 2050. And of course, aging in place was really important. Um, and fourth, we looked at the phenomenology of the city and you know what, what Vancouver is and what does it want to be and the identity and, and how do we achieve that and how do we keep that. And so by looking at these four different things, um, the coalescence of these findings really was, um, was the plan for 2050. And, and we really examined what opportunities exist within the city and within the neighborhoods uh, to incorporate a lot of these ideas. And here's Neil with the conglomeration. Hi, guys. So what came out of this was um, a way of thinking about the city as a, as a system uh, to reach goals of an 80% greenhouse gas reduction by 2050. Um, and out of that came four different strategies, uh, all interconnected. Uh, one is the streetcar grid up there, I think, um, that can be used to enable complete neighborhoods uh, neighborhoods that are walkable, bikeable, and connected by transit. Neighborhoods that house a diversity of places to live, work, and shop. A sustainable city is really a city of sustainable neighborhoods. Um, the second strategy is one of green jobs. Uh, these neighborhoods need to be connected to jobs, and this strategy connects, uh, locates thousands of green jobs to these neighborhoods along the, the streetcar grid that exists there, and it's woven into the natural spaces. Um, Third strategy is an idea of a green grid in the city that's equal to the transportation network. If you think of an 80% greenhouse gas reduction, you can kind of make the extension to an 80% reduction of cars on the streets. You can kind of take over that street space to turn it into a really great opportunity um, to, cr to connect the, uh, the system of parks, schools, natural features, and local food opportunities into a seamless citywide network of green streets that can foster social equity through participatory involvement. That kind of connects to a different idea, the fourth concept of continuous habitat. By weaving these green streets, 
by weaving living habitat into these green streets, you create a higher quality of the green spaces. You create living natural neighborhoods um, that have ecological function, which would be great to have that in the city again. I'll turn it over to James. <clears throat> Um, all right, and then the last stage of our uh, course was actually taking a lot of these broad scale themes and figuring out how to apply them. Because as we've seen today, a lot of it focuses on, you know, what does this mean for our neighborhoods? If we want to be a city of neighborhoods, how do we really bring these down to the community level? And so we looked at a series of um, 17 different design explorations around the city and um, just focused on the different strategies that might tie these into our um, sort of plan. And so these touched on themes all the way from, you know, naturalizing laneways and what would those look like to um, invisible population increases. So if our population really is going to double by 2050, how can we bring those extra people in and do it in a way that's both affordable as well as um, not having to resort to, you know, large scale condo towers all over the place that uh, really just make the city look like, you know, chock-a-block full of buildings. Um, as well, as we were talking about earlier, using these transportation corridors to not just connect neighborhoods, but to um, really revitalize them. So turning the city into a place that isn't just, you know, you've got a great neighborhood that you live in, but also how do you get to your neighboring, um, you know, areas, and how do you do that without, you know, huge greenhouse gas emissions? And, yeah, that was really the focus of this entire course. And, yeah, at the end of it, just creating a city of neighborhoods that we all want to live in, and that really does contribute to a sustainable future. So with that, I'll uh, wrap it up a bit. Um, so this is only sort of the beginning of a set of work, you know, um, and we really envision a lot more work to, to be done. Uh, we're hoping to find opportunities, for example, to work with some of the existing neighborhoods uh, um, in terms of work, looking at the neighborhood plans, the various neighborhood plans in Vancouver, working with neighborhood groups, and looking at how we can actually sort of tie what we've done here together with some of these plans, neighborhood plans, and um, sort of come up with like perhaps an OCP, an official community plan that's rooted in sort of sustainability and building resilient communities for Vancouver. So thank you. Um, uh, all this research will come out in, in the form of a book uh, in about two months, two or three months time. Um, and it's available through UBC bookshops and uh, or through the website as well. So the next slide should show the, um, the website or at least. Um, it's Urban, Urban Studio, is it? Urbanstudios.ubc.ca. You can and you can find all the research that we've done there, including the book information. Thank you.